Good morning. For our uh, final uh, panel discussion uh, for this year today, our topic is uh, the evolving classical dance pedagogy. Our erudite and accomplished panelists will talk about how content and teaching methods of classical dance have evolved over time, whether dance can be taught as a language of communication and creativity, how dance students can develop into thinking socially conscious individuals, and looking ahead, how teaching needs to evolve to connect with culturally diverse students and millennials, and how dancers should think about lifelong learning, which is critical for building a career in any field in the 21st century. So with this, I'd like to invite our panelists to come up on stage. Ms. Kanakrile, uh, Mr. Arvind Kumaraswamy, Mr. Hari Krishna Kalyanasundaram, Ms. Priyadarshini Govind, and our moderator, Ms. Pushkala Gopal. Ms. Priyadarshini Govind is donning a slightly different hat for today's discussion and is participating as a panelist. Many thanks to uh, Ms. Pushkala for her meticulous planning and uh, preparation for this discussion. So as always, if you have questions, please uh, write them down in the sheets of paper and uh, we'll address them in the last uh, 15 minutes. Thank you. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. E diname sudinamu in lots of ways. Vaikuntha Ekadashi say some. For us, this uh, opportunity to have such an august panel discussing pedagogy, including the developments, particularly uh, from uh, an academic perspective, but of course bearing in mind that we're talking about a performance art. For them all to have this opportunity and for the academy to prov have provided us with this forum I am deeply grateful. I'll take a moment to place my thanks on board to Mr. Murli, President of the Academy, Ramji, the Secretary, and Kami and Sujata particularly, with Anirudh, who've been responsible for the development and the generation of such dialogues and movement within the dance profession. So, Pedagogy, basically, we know that it is the process of um, imparting or making sure that the learner receives and develops skills, knowledge. There are also uh, ways of looking at it as, are to see pedagogy as part of the education sector. And uh, in Indian, dance parlance, we're very fond of using the word tutelage, parampara. So all these factors contribute to pedagogy. At one stage, it would have been seen as training a child or children. But now, commonly, the word is used for this system of learning. In our context, uh, pedagogy in oral traditions has been a robust part of the Indian experience, and equally so within the performing arts. So what we are going to start with today is a look at a first person, uh, Guru Shishya Parampara uh, pattern, and a first person experience, first of all, from Hare Krishna. So his uh, see, description says seventh generation Natya artist and uh, the family started. So he is a Mumbaikar as Dr. Kanak really reminded both him and me. The family moved from uh, Tanjaur in 1945. Now, uh, this is not the forum for me to share their CVs, but very briefly, I will tell you that he's been, first of all, a pupil 
and then in a later incarnation as an accompanist playing the mridangam, a choreographer, composer, and running parallel to all these strands has of course been his development as a teacher. So we would invite you, Hare Krishna, Namaskaram, to talk about uh, whatever you want to say from your earliest memories and other things that you might have heard from father, grandfather, uncle, anyone else. Thank you, Pushkala ma'am. Uh, to the very revered Dr. Kanak Reliji, and who has seen me grow as a baby in and around Mumbai, pronounce to you and the other senior artists on the dais and in the audience. So, uh, teaching methods that were used then, and now then is a relative term, so for you and I to get used to that then in my small little talk would be around 1770 because that is the time we have some recorded history of my uh, the f great 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 grandfather Hari Venkata Krishna Nathona. So I will quickly t take you through the methods that they employed spread over four generations. So we'll cover up to 1910 very quickly in some two minutes. Let's take many factors that are important for teaching. Content of the study, the curriculum, planning strategies that are required by the teacher as soon as he enters the class. So what was the situation then? We will see as I keep speaking. So keep relating to that time period where there is no sound of rickshaw and buses, different uh, TV channels and different music hitting through your mobile phone. So the student available was complete uh, attention and very connected to the ritualistic practices of any family, to the temple, to the sounds of the Tevaram, Tiruvasagam. To, so the student was quite well equipped. Now, quick one minute about the Natyacharya. He was required to be proficient in music, minimum three languages of Sanskrit, Tamil and Telugu. So you can see that how we want to practice dance today. Literature is important, music is important, was all a guiding force, indicators for the tutor as well. And technical, specific literature, wherein you had to be able to recognize the gesture, the pointed positions, the postures that are discussed in the Natya Shastra and many other specific texts. So he was, it was a given that he had to be having that knowledge. So teaching was a variety, uses a variety of methods to deliver content or a unit of study. So th these methods include the use of demonstration. In Gurukula, it was direct instruction and the master used to get up and dance, the demonstration. The student had to be listening and extremely observant. So this is what happened as a method of learning and teaching at that time. So the evolution of the pedagogy in my parampara, I shall illustrate this method through the journey of the family. So the teaching methods used then, the classroom was of an individual experience. The content included rigorous and many hours of adavus, no, to understand body movement, navigating space, whatever other terminology that we would want to add today. That time the instruction, the delivery of content was Tamil because the student was also from the same area. We never had many students from far. So they had that background, so Tanjaur, and then they also had the background of the music and literature since they were very connected to that. So then let's compare that to the teacher's outcome method. So in a teacher's outcome, as you would uh, want now, again, the content of teaching, it will keep repeating because content, curriculum, drafted for a given set of students, 
their background is very important today and the length of time because you have the whole bunch of short term learners who come in at third grade and leave at ninth grade or come in at 10th grade and leave at 12th grade or so how do you uh, plan specific uh, curriculum for that group and what is their background is what we plan today so then what used to happen they had to go through the whole rigor morning to evening and all the adavus and sahagasama learn the hastas he was proficient in the specific literature so he used to talk about it and uh, hasta binaya or whether it's uh, anga upanga and prate whatever i would not get into the uh, other specifics of technical uh, in expression so and then evening would be a padam or so bharatanatyam thus uses body and expressions as its career also has different fields that we recognize today and then that plays an important part is music so it plays a guiding role in dancers movements so it also stimulates a dancer's inner throbbing music and gives more passion to her dance and thus that will give her a strong desire of performance so this is what is the effect of music and the knowledge of it or if you are a music enthusiast so excellent music compositions never escape from the dancer's acute ears thus music plays a vital role now how did this fit in in the gurukula system so he was already a natyacharya was had to be equipped to be a good musician and he used to impart through oral tradition again syllabus is not seen i mean just so later on you will be able to understand when dr kanak reli ji speaks yet you had great dancers it's a practical or uh, art form to be performed and what are the good things that a dancer should have was given they were exposed to that much more i would say how great stalwarts used to come and speak about a composition its inner meaning so in a gurukula they were exposed to such content much like how we have specific uh, talks now those talks used to happen in the house of that master he had different stalwarts who used to come he used to take help of other literary giants of those times and thus since he was already supposed uh, to know sanskrit and tamil deeply he could also keep instructing orally to the student the assessment student outcome as we say the assessment or the statement clear statement we say now that certificate is a clear statement that so and so can do this or has a knowledge of this 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 at that point of time the statement from a vidwan or a visiting artist was enough for eva sariya pandra means she knew the content she was good in whatever that vidwan has said and that was a clear statement so you had content delivery and you had the student uh, learners outcome was the statement was not in a paper or other form but orally also given i must remind you in that system the student also went wherever the masters used to go thus the content needed to a music enthusiast was available all around and if needed the master arranged for the music lessons to be taught in his gurukulam so soon the content and how the repetitive method along with the exposure and practice of music made the student learn deeply the art form the afternoon sessions the discussions of the technical aspects of bharatanatyam through the study of literary works specific to natyam such as natya shastra 
chapters dealing with the mudras, sthanakas, bhavas and so on and so forth inculcated a deep knowledge in the student and improved the execution of her performance. So it was recognized by the dance masters that technical knowledge was very important even then through their sessions every day. The Gurukulam experience to sum it up, then we'll come to the later stage. The individual had the masters complete attention, access to the compositions, the vast repertoire. There was a great continuity in learning for a length of time. She didn't have to travel back and forth. She or he used to be in the house or in close proximity. The deeper philosophy, the exposure to the deeper philosophy of Natyam and a strong sense of identity. Now, if you see this strong sense of identity and inculcating a confident learning uh, atmosphere is part of now what we recognize as students' learner outcomes. You know? So the involved learners, making them as involved learners was inculcated at that time, although the language used was Tamil. The acknowledgement by the masters or the visiting students became, or the stalwarts, became a clear statement of the student's ability. A clear statement of whatever a learner is expected of, what a learner is expected to do, or able to do, or knows to do. Thus we have the certificate which clearly states that this certifies the student can delineate from Alaripo to Tilana or knows level one of Natya Shastra or level two, depending on the specific curriculum. Then that statement was orally delivered. And that used to spread by word of mouth. So Bharata Natyam, along with music, literature on Natya, literature which included specific and non-specific, and the abundance material, the attentiveness of the student, made it a very holistic experience. Now this happened until 1900. 1886, Panchapakesa Natonar came up with Abhinaya Navanitam, a translation of Abhinaya Darpana into Tamil. Now books started making their way into a Natyacharya's family, Guru Kulam, use of that method to instruct. The book was printed much later. He wrote it at 1886, but since he was around, that material was used in the lessons. They had to move from Tanjaur to Tiruvade Mardur between 1900 and 1945. The family practiced the art in Tiruvade Mardur. The good work by great stalwarts at that time of different dance styles helped us also to receive students from different villages because who felt like this village is closer, let us go and learn Indian there. And the Mari Padmini Raginila Vandrakangan Shulra, sorry, can I shift to Tamil whenever possible? Ex ex pardon me. Yes. And my personal journey then is even I didn't have that connect. Tanjaro Temple is just one kilometer away. It was not. I was born in Mumbai. So now in this pedagogy, language of instruction then is, was Tamil by my great, great, great grandfather. I'm speaking to you in English. So I had to learn English. I had to learn Hindi. We had to equip ourselves to use different methods of delivery. Modern tools were used, much like it is used in various classrooms of different uh, schools. The use of the board, the whiteboard, 
ऑडियो मटेरियल वीडियो मटेरियल वर इनकॉपरेटेड इन टू टीचिंग अ क्विक इंसाइट टू माय जर्नी इट बेनिफिटेड विथ द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ माय फादर माय ग्रैंडफादर माय पेरियपा गुरु महालिंग पिल्ले गुरु गोविंद राज पिल्ले वी यूज टू कीप कमिंग डाउन साउथ आर फैमिली प्रैक्टिस्ड डिलीजेंटली टू परफॉर्म इन बृहदीश्वरा टेम्पल कोंकणेश्वर टेम्पल एंड महालिंग स्वामी टेम्पल फॉर मोर देन टू हंड्रेड इयर्स इन उपली अपन कोयल रामनवमी टेंथ डे वॉज सेट फॉर आर फैमिली इट्स बीन गोइंग ऑन फ्रॉम जेनरेशंस वी स्टील टेक आर स्टूडेंट्स वी डोंट शिफ्ट दैट डेट वी गो टू लॉर्ड रामास sanidhanam and do it now what did this help me is to get that strong bonding exposure to the tevaram tiruvasagam pasuram tamil my father was a ex- great scholar in tamil and he arranged for me to have exposure to sanskrit and do st- studies in that and dance was in and around all of us all through the day that it was a great benefit for me to come up and learn and continue to learn through their discussions observations and analytic uh, dissecting of compositions which is a study material for me also to make me think guide me to the content and then make me try but the, they would they are good teachers so i have to see that and use that and try to see what they want me to go and see and share that as a teacher in my academy thank you mm-hmm. i had uh, thank you i had a quick question so did you not find a clash between needing to go to school needing to go to college and still have to do this full time can you just tell us about oh i was a normal boy and <laughs> in to ncc camp swimming doing this and that basketball but uh, i uh, didn't find it as a compulsion idu dhan pananu panitte dhan ni velada ponu and mari there was nothing as a this you had to practice and then you could go out it was right around all of us and i think i wanted uh, i uh, idol worshiped my father <laughs> <laughs> so i was a baby and i used to be anga uh, nataraja irukum and the wings la amma anga vechittirupanga po and the light la and the, there was a circular thing you know you could change so that used to fascinate me when that lighting man used to be there and change the color so i used to be quiet over there but and i used to see him wield the symbols and you know in an unapologetical manner you know when you wield the symbols you say apdi undu nama sollano apdi nama aadi kaatano natuna irukku ஆட்டி வைக்கவும் தெரியணும் ஆடவும் தெரியணும் அப்படிலாம் சொல்லி கேட்டிருக்கேன் ஸோ தட் யூஸ் டு இன்ஸ்பயர் மீ நம்ம ஆடணும் தெரியணும் நமக்கு வி ஷுட் பி ஏபிள் டு நோ வாட் வி ஆர் தட்டு ஃபேங் இல்லைன்னா தட்டக்கூடாது ஏன் நீ தட்டுட்டணும் ஸோ வி நெவர் யூஸ் டு டச் த சிம்பிள் ஈவன் இஃப் இட் இஸ் வாஸ் மை அங்கிள்ஸ் கம்போசிஷன் இஃப் ஐ டின் நோ டு டான்ஸ் தட் ஃப்ரம் ஏ டு ஜி ஐ வில் நாட் தட்டு ஃபை ஃபார் எதர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட் ஈவன் தோ தேவில் சே மாஸ்டர் சன் இட்ஸ் ஓகே தேர் வாஸ் நோ சச் ப்ரிவிலேஜ் வித் இன் ஆர் ஸ்கூல் i had to know the dance before i touched the natwangam always no you don't need to we we still do that now when uh, we do collaborative work i don't certify if i don't know the dance our uh, student or whoever has comp- choreographed that we welcome them to certify that because adha na auchityam very quickly on the topic of uh, learning uh, through uh, the tradition of generations of uh, people from the natunar family i wanted to call upon arvind to say something about his training with uh, varur shamraj pile and uh, priya to talk about her training with swami malay rajaratnam sir very briefly these are your small units okay uh, vanakkam and namaskaram uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, panel um so my uh, i started to learn uh, bharatanatyam from 
three sisters who were uh, called Srikantham sisters in Sri Lanka, where I was born in Colombo. They were direct disciples of Ramya Pillai, Guru Ramya Pillai, and uh, they got uh, into the dance uh, because they watched the Trivancore sisters. And their father immediately the next day sold all the lands, landed in, in Mailapur and uh, came to Vathira and said, in the moon upon the looking is our Avalamari Soli Kudungon. He was shocked because they didn't have, they have no home, nothing. But so that gave them opportunity to be a gurukulam. So they lived with Vadir. Once a month they were allowed to go to go out to last for two hours to buy anything. They stayed in the they never came out of the house. Any kacheri, if he thinks that they would like they should see, he will bring them. So it was a 24 by 7, uh, you know, learning. So then they came back to hometown, uh, Colombo. They started the Valvurar uh, Natyalaya, where I started to learn. And then we had the great fortune of having uh, uh, Kamala Lakshman come to Colombo. And she performed this beautiful Sadin Chene. And uh, for me, it, as a male dancer, it was exciting because Padavaranam, as a young um, pre-teenager, teenager, I was struggling uh, to, to, to learn and imbibe. When I saw this, uh, because I was also a music student, I, and I was so surprised. And then uh, I told my uh, gurus, you know, I would like to learn. They said, no, they didn't know the item. So once I'd finished my man margam, it was my gurus who said that maybe you are ready to uh, go and learn from our Vadiyar. You come with us, we are going to Chennai. Uh, we will ask him whether he will be willing to uh, take me as a student. So I had the good fortune to arrive here and uh, he said, uh, Sari, uh, show me what you know. So I uh, performed for him. Uh, my teacher, uh, my, one of my gurus did the Natavangam and I, in the house itself, there was a, I called that's my Arangetram actually. Uh, so I had the opportunity to learn. Then he found out that I was also going to uh, you know, start my Veena with uh, uh, Kalpam Swaminathan and he said, oh, Musing Kathakriya. So for me, uh, my learning with Vadyar, like I can relate to what I just heard, was to listen a lot and see a lot. So the amount of dancing I would have done, uh, it, it, uh, it's much lesser compared to how much he allowed me to listen and, and see. And uh, because I was a music uh, student and I could sing as well, he called me for all the other rehearsals. He'll say, in the rehearsal, you can do it. So I could to watch the whole Valuvur repertoire come out uh, from him uh, you know, performing and to see great uh, you know, legends perform, rehearse and kacheris. I went to Delhi, Bombay, many kacheris. He said, Neem what train le. So that was uh, my learning. But what I can say is that uh, uh, those days we don't ask questions. So why Torakamato? But uh, what was stuck is that uh, in the Adavu systems, he would skip Adavus for different students. And that's when it dawned to me that he, it, in that system, they used to teach a personalized uh, way of the of the Bharatanatyam to each each disciple. That is why today the Valurar Bani, the legends who are dancing, no two are the same. Uh, so even the Adavus will skip. He'll say, "Ananala the ni panada." So we are in a class. So I, I didn't, we didn't, of course, question him. Later, one day in a train ride, uh, when I could have the diary to ask him, in the Tatay Taha Yen, the Rendu Vandana, and you asked him, Yeah, um, body type, Adagwana, Matada Paniko. You know, so then I realized that, that it was a personal training, and so was the repertoire. So, of course, I begged him for Sadhin Chine, the whole reason I came, but I was not, uh, I was denied of Sadhin Chine. He said, Adi Kamala Kapanade. I have no time to now set it for you. So, no, that's it. So, it was, uh, uh, it was so the repertoire, Adavu system, everything was personalized. So, what I have a treasure from my guru is something he gave for me. And he did it for every student that he took care. So, that is the way. Pass on to Priya. Namaskaram. Uh, I had two very different kinds of uh, learning. One was from uh, Guru Sri Swami Malay Rajaratnam, the other one Guru Srimati Kalanidhi Narayanan, to speak about Swami Malay Rajaratnam, sir. Um, like it was quite common in those days, uh, Vadyar used to come home the first in the beginning years, and uh, it was only later that we went to his, uh, to his house. And it was always individual class. It was one to one. 
um, I have never uh, had a class with another student. So it was very personalized training. And as uh, Arvind mentioned, um, Vadya would, um, I think, uh, you know, according to the dancer and her capacity, her ability, the way she, uh, she danced and her structure, his or her structure, he would change the adverse a bit and uh, to suit the dancer. As far as um, Vadya's training was concerned, there was very little said during class. It was always sung. Uh, the most enduring memory of Vadya that I have is his music. He was a very gentle man who uh, was lost in his music most of the time, uh, very sensitive, very creative. And uh, he would sit there and uh, in his chair. And I don't, there were, there, are, there were a few instances where he used to get up and show. Um, but more than that, it was, I, I still don't, I, I try to remember, there was really no articulation of how one adavu has to be done. There was very uh, non-verbal transmission and transference that happened. And it was through his music. I think the greatest gift that he gave us was the, uh, his, uh, the music through which we learned the beauty of dance. I think uh, Vadyar's was, uh, because, uh, you know, his one of the main things that he always said he, right till the end was, Shanda Podra Mari you know, it should always be beautiful. The audience should have a smile when they see you. It shouldn't, you shouldn't scare them away. And uh, grace was very important. Okkar, these were the words that I remember. But over, but the most enduring memory is how he taught us through his music. So I think unconsciously, without him having actually to say in the Sangadi Privardha, or you must dance like this for this kind of music, we learnt it through the experience. And it also gave us the space to grow. Now when I when I when I am teaching, I find myself um, you know articulating every single second and trying to even get the effect from the students. But when I think back on how we learned, they allowed you to experience it by yourself. It was not taught or articulated with so much detail. So I think that's, the, that's how I can sum up. You, you said something very nice, so I'm putting it down. <laughs> Naturally yeah, finished. Yeah. yeah, thanks. So, uh, Priya will talk about her experience with Kalanithi Mami a little later into this session because what we have next is uh, the contrasting situation of uh, what uh, Dr. Kanakrele has brought to the world of Natyam. And uh, she is described as a legend in her lifetime. And uh, we are indeed privileged to have her here. When I was having my first uh, introductory conversation with uh, Dr. Rele, she said, I'm a Gujarati married into Maharashtra, working with the dance form from Kerala. And uh, of course, the, the next part of the conversation was that she was also working at Revival and Resurgence, and uh, has been professionally visible for the last uh, 50 years with a, with a different kind of visibility before that. So her acquiring the technique of the styles or the knowledge of the styles would have happened earlier, but her, uh, you know, how it all burst into fruition. So there are two institutes that uh, Dr. Kanakrele is relating to, uh, perhaps even more in inception, which will be born in future. But uh, today, we are not asking her to talk to us as a choreographer or as a revivalist or anything like that. The thrust today is about all the academic uh, uh, weight she has brought 
and also, as she says, Maharashtra didn't know anything about classical dance before the institution came into being. Now that is something which, uh, you know, might be arguably true because without the right group of students to go and give uh, credence to the institution, Nalanda wouldn't be as robust in the world of dance as it is in, the, uh, in both within India and outside. So one of the uh, institutes, Nalanda Dance Research Center, has been uh, recognized officially as a scientific and industrial research organization. But uh, before we run away thinking that, uh, oh, arts has been taken over by science, when you see the uh, products who've come out of Nalanda directly, people like Vaibhavarekar or indirectly, like disciples of Dr. Rayleigh's own disciples, it is uh, interesting that uh, pedagogy has been granted that kind of a status. Now, the other association, of course, is the, uh, the University of Mumbai has introduced uh, a degree in fine arts from Nalanda Nritya Kala Mahavidyale. Dr. Kanak Reilly also has another strand, which is work for pre university, younger pupils, but I've told her to reserve that to talk about it later. Dr. Rele, would you like to talk from where you're sitting? Okay, please. Uh, namaskar. Uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of an odd person over here because surrounded by all traditionalists and people who belong to the uh, genre, people belong to the actual soil from which uh, the arts have emanated and India is uh, a fantastic storehouse, a storehouse of such arts. I am. I was judged as an outsider. I belong to a very extremely, in the um, wealthy, I should say, Gujarati family, uh, industrialists, and uh, uh, that background was very different because uh, my family would go and a holiday in London, and uh, that was the atmosphere from which I came. I don't know what had happened, what, what, what went wrong in my background, I don't know, but I started getting drawn towards <laughs> dancing. And it was my parent, my mother's family. My uncle was a very fine painter, and he had learned under Nundalas Bosch at uh, Shantiniketan. So I spent my childhood in Shantiniketan, and there I had a tremendously uh, beneficial uh, input into my artistic background. And there I saw all sorts of people come. I came back to Mumbai uh, with my family, and uh, I used to all the time caper around and dance. And as luck would have it, we had one of the finest uh, Kathakali performers, uh, Sri Raghavan Nair, who had migrated to Mumbai. And uh, he was sort of, you know, people who were patronizing him uh, would say that he needs students, he doesn't want charity. So what to do? They hid the fact, uh, my family, that is my uncle, my mother's uh, brother and my mother, they hid the fact from, the, from my grandmother, uh, I would call her Ba, uh, that uh, he was a Kathakali artist because Ba knew that much that it was Rakshasi dance. I was put under Raghavan Nair and uh, I, I mean, the day he came there, a lovely, handsome man with, I, I've never seen anybody have such eyes. And he walked into our ho house and uh, I had one look at him and went under a bed. Because I was terrified with those eyes. Uh, a little while later, I saw this man crawl behind me and he sat there and winked at me <laughs> and smiled at me. Well, that, that started a love affair. Then he took me out and you won't believe, but he held me in his hand and he, that time he sang, he was a fantastic singer and he danced the kummi. Well, that, that made me fall in love with Kathakali in which I have never been able to come out of it. Years have passed, I don't want to talk about that. I was a brilliant student at the, at the academic level. That was expected of me. I went ahead, <clears throat> I did my law. I. I took my sanad and everybody said that oh, she'll make a very, very successful lawyer. And uh, I received a very fine uh, push, went to England, to Manchester University, and did my post-graduation in international law. And I stood first there. 
and there was there was an offer from my my university manchester university why don't you join us and you can become a fun, very very fine researcher well i i could not do nothing and in our our language we say i had a peculiar itch in my foot khaz ye thoti and that khaz would not leave me so and uh, it was my husband yatin a lovely man who realized that this khaz is not going to go away so he dragged me back to mumbai he said you you will be very very unhappy here uh, your khaz is growing i think so come back i had my son and uh, the thing was that i was so fortunate my home I, we had we had a very big bungalow at dadar it was only 2 minutes walk from guruji's home uh, ashan som and uh, i would uh, once my son was uh, born uh, i would sort of put him to sleep and of course i had servants and all that i would go galloping to guruji and <clears throat> and practice everything that was to be practiced but the same guru had discarded me earlier saying what is she going to do she is a gujarati she will not understand what we are doing so i used to hide behind a uh, uh, and there was one wall there i was i would hide behind that and whatever he was teaching the others other children i would note it down so one day my mother saw this and she went to guruji and said ki see you are you are saying this we understand that we are not malayalis but look at the way this girl has done and i was sketching i would i would sketch everything and this stunned him and then that is when the this other love of her started when the old man uh, took me to his soul and uh, i today dance uh, when i do gadagali it is the 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 style which he followed and which most of the stri vesham cars follow because he was he was a stri vesham car and there i learned how to adapt the the vigorous and uh, purusha vesham kathakali to the stri vesham requirements this slowly took me towards something which i started seeing and then very accidentally i was introduced to a lady who came from uh, uh, she was in uh, kerala and she migrated to mumbai and they said that she is in need of some work kanak why don't you sort of give give her some work and she is not going to be a beggar i said i don't want to give alms to anybody okay i'll do something what do you want me to do she is teaching mohini atam so what the hell that is so that is look it's a very beautiful style why don't you go to her uh just couple of days and a tremendous love of her has started which is still in my heart skanakrile and mohini atam the two words go together it's a very long span of things but on the sideline it was my family and my guruji who said that you must know what is natya shastra you will have to learn natya shastra i'm very good at sanskrit i had taken sanskrit in school and that is way i started analyzing what is uh, natya shastra bharatas natya shastra and the uh, later texts which evolved i am very good at all that and it has convinced me one thing and that is that there are there are no barriers there can be no barriers they cannot say that you are not born a malayali or something what the hell is all this natya shastra doesn't belong to kerala it belongs to the world and i have delved so deep into it and i teach natya shastra at my institution but all these experience i am telling you is that uh, a very fine uh, academic career in manchester university in, in in researching international law and my my special subject was international waterways so i had to do all these things a tremendous background which has honed my mind and my psyche to find out what everything is and what it means i had to go i i was not a britisher i was a complete indian and i did not want to give up my nationality i came back to my country but this has honed me and i am absolutely convinced that natya shastra doesn't only belong to india it belongs to the world if you have the gumption and you have the desire to go deep into it it's it, it's such a bottomless ocean you go on diving into it and you come up with some rare pearls which i did i have i have come across Dr. this dr rele was there a single moment when you thought i must start this institution or what led you to yes this is what it is that if i have learned this if i have learned this and some of the greatest scholars they they had guided me they were from chennai they were from uh, kerala naturally from kerala but also the great sanskritic background that 
Maharashtra has. When did you go from individual learning to making all this available through well, the institute? Well, I, 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 I could not forget, even today I can't forget, that they said, hey, but you are not a South Indian. Why the hell are you doing this? Look, Keralites never did this to me. Absolutely not. And uh, that is the way I went on. And I said, no, if this great, great ocean was open to me to dive into and come out with some pearls. Well, you gave society the best answer because Nalanda has thrown out a lot of professionals from every part of the country's and world. heritage. Yes. So please tell us how you devised the whole thing. Why did the research center start first? And then why did the <coughs> College of Fine Arts come next? Well, uh, Nalanda, Nalanda was working in this. Uh, you see, I was very fortunate. Uh, I'm a Bombay University, Mumbai Uni uh, Vidyapet now, a product of that. That time, the vice chancellor, vice chancellor who stepped in was my <coughs> principal from law college, government law college, Dr. T.K. Tope. He kept on telling me in Marathi, he would say, what the hell are you doing in this law? He was such a lovely dancer. Why don't you do something in dance? So when he became the VC, uh, sorry, Vice Chancellor, I'm, I beg your pardon. Uh, he became the Vice Chancellor. Uh, I naturally went to greet him. He was my sir. And I, I really, I mean, six feet, four inches tall man with a thundering voice, but he was a Sanskritist. So when I went to meet him and I very timidly said, sir, uh, can I make a request? Oh, yes, yes, why don't you say it? Why don't you say So I said, sir, can we have a diploma at Bombay University in dance? He thundered, what do you mean by diploma? It's all, all useless. <coughs> have a degree. And like a damned ass, I said, yes, let us have a degree. Had I known I have to wor work so hard and suffer so hard, I would have run in the opposite direction. <laughs> I would have jumped in the <coughs> Arabian Sea, done So anything. why the research center first? And then, then the School of Finance. Uh, you see, what happened is, what, the, wh what is it that feeds the academic line? You have to feed the academics. Then there is a core of people, a core of researchers. Uh, naturally, I lead it, but there has been a big, big number of scholars. And they have to feed this. Cult from that, just as you make uh, lassi, you make buttermilk. I, I used to make buttermilk of all these experiences which came through. And then it was the Bombay University academic line, academic staff. They adopted me. I, I can walk into the Bombay University anytime and the whole university will get up to respect me. So that is how we evolved these courses. Mind you, not a single classical dance style belongs to Mumbai, uh, to Maharashtra. Which is why it's a great achievement. Your degree, uh, if you assume I know nothing about it, is it a degree in one style of classical dance yes, or a yes, combination yes. of styles? No, no, no combinations. I don't believe in combinations. The student comes, uh, they, uh, this is the only, only university, only course in the whole of India where the student steps into the university after doing 10th SSC. And after doing 10th SSC, there's two years of preliminary work, three years of degree, then go to postgraduate and you want to do PhD, do your PhD, everything. So, you know, this, this is the way I had to work. And I went from step to step. I had to see what the children want. That is where I, it attracted me. I remembered my... Days. See, obviously the children would uh, know that they want something if they have a pattern. Yes. How did you draw your first set of that professionals? Was, that was a they, big, big Who was your professorial team? Who was your teaching team? All, all the people from all over India. Keluchan, Mahapatra. All these people were adv our advisors. But you didn't have a degree in ODC, did you? Uh, what no, did he feed are, into? Uh -huh. Well, I, I don't believe in ODC or anything of that sort. This is Indian classical dance. Okay. You learn your Natya Shastra, you learn all the texts, and then what I have done is I, I have specialized in it, and my theories are well known all over the world. There's body kinetics in Indian classical wow. dance. Wow. So, can I come back uh, to you for you to talk about that when we talk about uh, Natya and the yes. future generation? You want me to talk about uh, body kinetics? Uh, later. Okay. Because we will do a Priyadarshini with the Abhinaya technique, and that's again something I wanted to talk about after Priya, because uh, I have followed your book uh, on uh, Bhavani Rupana. And uh, it's a fantastic piece of work. So, uh, and Priya has live experience of uh, actually acquiring mommies, uh, pedagogy, Kalyaniti mommies. Yes. So I think we'll, the audience will get sure, something definitely. very valuable from that. Yes. So can I just, uh, thank you. you have it? Um, 
my experience with Kalanadhi Mami was very different from Vadya's classes because Mami, for Mami, discussion was very important. Uh, the way we learned, again, it was one on one classes and we were seated. Uh, I would wonder why Mami started that uh, method of teaching. She says that she also learnt it like that. But I also, and I think initially it was also because uh, she came from, she had stopped dancing for many years and she was already, um, you know, in her 40s when she came back to teach. I think she felt more comfortable. Start, I mean, it was a combination of that. But I think it was, you know, it was something that was the most effective method of teaching because it uh, completely allowed you to concentrate on the thought. And, you know, the intellectual exercise became very important, the base, because you didn't have to worry about the stepping, etc. So, Mami used to teach seated. The first thing that she did was the lyrics were sacrosanct. You had to go through the word-to-word -word meaning. We had to write down the word-to-word -word meaning. And then she would talk about the Naika. I think Vaibhavji uh, spoke about. So every situation, the, the situation of the composition, the character, what kind of Naika she was, what, uh, you know, how would she react? Would, w there would be a discussion and then we would start the class. Um, Mami started teaching in 74, I think, and I started with her six months or within a year of her uh, starting to teach Abhinaya. So I think in a way the early students who were with her from that time grew with her. So I remember very clearly the initial years of teaching. It would be extremely systematic. Um, if it was uh, any whatever, whether it was a padam or a javali, uh, the first hand would be a literal hand, then it would be, there would be a sthai for that hand, apart from the sthai for the entire composition. It would be surprise or sarcasm or anger, you know, that would be the main uh, mood. Then Kalanadi Mami in the initial years would give us the dialogue to write. We never wrote it down because I think for her also she was discovering how to teach, you know, what to her was very natural and very obvious. I, you know, she wanted to make sure that she transferred it to us in the right manner, the way she imagined it. So she would give us the dialogue. It would be, I learned Tamil, to write Tamil, learn, uh, read and write Tamil through Kalanadi Mami's classes. I never studied Tamil in school but we learnt it like that. Similarly, Telugu. Uh, so in the initial years, there was, you know, there was not much overlapping between one hand and another. The subtle nuances were less obvious in the beginning. But as years went by, you know, the deep layered uh, approach became more and more obvious. And Initially, we would l write one line or two line explanation of the hands. Later on, it would be a page and we would leave more space to add in because every time we uh, uh, explored it in the next class, there would be more to note down. But she was very particular that you write it down because what she said was you'll never remember the nuances. Uh, I think that's something that's very important in Abhinaya because when we see it, we understand it and for that moment we remember it. But we try to recreate it again. You will remember the broad idea but you will forget the nuances which is actually the heart and soul of that hand. Um, so later on, Kalanati Mami, you know, the way she handled the... Um, hands or the variations, uh, you know, it was like um, there were so many subtle nuances that would roll one after the other, right? So this was the, and the approach was, if you take a composition, 
she would always, she was very systematic in her thought. So it, they would always have a, an opening, you know, depending on the situation of the piece, of course, the actual body of the composition, and there would be an ending. So the approach was always like that. So till today, most of us follow that. And the other thing about Kalanandi auntie was, um, and Abhinaya, and the way she taught Abhinaya was, she always said the person in front of her inspired her. She never planned the hands before. What came at that moment was what it was. And it was very dependent on the student sitting in front of her. And she, of, therefore, naturally, none of the hands were ever repeated. And it's logical because no thought can ever be repeated. So the other, and the other thing was, Kalandi Mami gave great freedom to us. She would discuss the idea. She would point out, you know, how it can be effectively portrayed. But she allowed you to discover how to go about it. So because of which, we all came from different dance, uh, you know, barnies. So some, uh, uh, some of us, uh, you know, were more effective, effectively used our body. There were, uh, some had uh, more effective usage of hastas. Mm -hmm. So she never interfered with that. But if anything didn't look right to her, she would always mention. But she allowed you to discover your language of Abhinaya. And uh, the other thing about Kalanadi auntie was uh, not just Abhinaya, she was very, very particular about the student understanding and studying all aspects. So she used to arrange for us to learn Padams, mm -hmm. to, to learn sing to sing Yubi. Padams. And then she arranged Natuvangam classes for us. She arranged for uh, lectures from Rao, uh, Mr. Ranga Rao. He would teach us Telugu, he would teach us the compositions. So any uh, composition that we took up, whatever the language was, she was very particular. So a thought comes to me that really she was preparing you for Manodharma. Absolutely. Rather than just direct uh, Abhinaya. Absolutely. And here I would like a sentence from Hare Krishna and a sentence from uh, Arvind. Uh, because Arvind mentioned to me that uh, Varur Samraj sent him to Sarasamma to learn Abhinaya. <laughs> so please, can you both comment? And then Priya, if you have anything else to wrap up. After which, I would like to go back to Dr. Kanakrele about uh, the training of Abhinaya. Uh, Hare Krishna. So since uh, the Abhinaya was taught uh, in a demonstration and direct instruction, the student learned through observation the specific uh, of specifics of the situation in a given padam was explained, but most of them were in conversation. And Malinga master used to get up and dance, and then they were supposed to get it. If they didn't get it in the first chance, he would change it immediately. Because <laughs> if you are unable to sit down and tie the flower or whatever. So the uh, Padam or whether it was a Tanavarnam or Useni Swarajati and the big chunks of uh, expressional aspects that used to come, it was taught as pieces. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to ask you both another question later, but Arvind first. Yeah, okay. So in, in my experience when I was uh, with Vadyar, uh, Abhinaya class uh, was not a separate thing. It was part and parcel of that repertoire. And uh, it was never taken out separately. And uh, the ha it was more of hand gestures. Mano Dharma was, the freedom was there to, to explain and, and, and to do. But what Vadyar used to say is first learn the composition, the way that is being taught. When you mature yourself, you'll be able to then do the vinyasam. So he didn't encourage us to you know, deal in out. But what he did was for me, I don't know whether it was for me, or, but I know other students did, he sent me to Sarasamma. He said, Anga class Gupo, just go for a few classes, then you will understand how Abhinaya should be translated. So when I went to Sarasamma, the first thing she said was, Sabdam Pannala. Sabdatlana, we start there. So she taught me a Sabdam. And 
when i came back to vadhir he said ipa purinjada eppadi kai sekkiradhu eppadi kai kokkiradhu so that's how abhinay uh, was uh, introduced to me so this question is for uh, priya and for uh, hari uh, when you now do padams on stage are you doing manodharmam or are you using mommy's principles and setting something and then extrapolating from there priya first and then hari hari i know is not related to mommy but uh, do you improvise so as you said mommy prepared us for manodharma so i and she always encouraged us to uh, be uh, creative so there was no na solrata dam pannano never because mommy said i i myself don't remember what i said so i think it's important that you should develop so the whole i think the entire teaching method was to make you think and an emotional journey as well Absolutely. right the thought was important so it was not an item never it was a, never an, an experience item. yes and today what we do of course we are all trained in a particular way but trained that a training that has prepared us to be creative so when i uh, when when i approach a composition i have to understand it which is of but necessary and then and i have to visualize it so that the psyche the the thought of the poet has to come out in a true and honest manner and uh, she she was al- also as i said there was always a beginning i mean she it had to be complete you know it was you just didn't come on stage and do the composition there was always a prelude where the dancer prepared not only herself not only the situation and the stage but also the audience to come in so that we all follow quite similar in the teaching uh, methods used our student is not uh, admonished for forgetting a hand or inserting some other hasta over there if it was relevant so the indu- i will just paint a quick picture of an ajanta fresco in your mind a hand or a given posture had a specific which we might recognize or not but it has a name so when you look at the whole detailing of it there is a well bred inherited aspect of the painter to give that hand or the whole structure it might look as an individual brilliance so also we treat that brilliance of our students wherein if that hand did come out at that it is from a well thought over process and we allow it to stay thank you uh dr kanak really you obviously come from a tradition in uh, particularly in kathakali where they teach you to do the physical factors of the features of the face to employ everything and then abhinaya comes uh, the storytelling stra- strand is separate and it comes now in your bhava nirupana i actually found that uh, the analysis of the uh, naikas and situations and all that was quite deep please uh, tell us how you put all these things together and what you have devised for the teaching of abhinaya for the students who go through your portals look what what these people have said i was just smiling to myself it is all there in my system okay kerala system i i belong to kerala system forget my antecedents and it is all there everything is very well ordained and it is taught every analysis is there uh, but after that naturally each one is different i have any number of students you 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 talk of vibhav arekar you talk of sunanda nai you talk of deepak mazumdar and any number of them i judge every student everyone is not the same but i was taught in a very different way where they said that you will have to do this then i would say i would just look at uh, my guru my ashan and said first you learn this is the tradition you learn uske baad jo karna ho karo not now but i emotionally intellectually i think i do go into intellectual aspects i didn't want to stir away from what he had taught i went it my business to go through the natya shastrik tradition and you you have talked about bhavani rupana which is selling like hot cakes all over the place i am told i it's my uh, nalanda teach, uh, sells it i am not concerned with it so the major thing is that all this that they have said is there in the kerala system i was taught that what i did was i have made sketches of that to help the students 
how to move the body. What is the body kinetics? I mean, that is my special contribution to the world of dance. And that is where I say that these are the kinetics of Kathakali, this is the kinetics of uh, Bharatanatyam, this is the kinetics of Mohini So in the courses that you've devised, do they learn Abhinaya, by the way, as part of learning repertoire? Yes, yes. Or do you have separate Abhinaya classes? No, we, they, they, learn, they learn an item. Then, for a very long time, I used to step in. I used to analyze it in terms of the Natya Shastri tradition. What is the Sthayi Bhava, Vibhavas, Anubhavas, and Vyabhichari Bhavas. And then the whole gamut of uh, texts. They had to learn that. They make their, uh, their uh, journals. They, they noted down everything. Uh, they sketch the movements according to the styles in the journal. Just one piece, uh, one jati from uh, Mo, uh, Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyams do the same thing. My work in Mohini Atam. They sketch all these things. Uh, somebody asked me, what's the point? I said, the major thing is when they sketch, they know the body kinetics. How do you demarcate the aesthetics of what kind of facial use is okay for Odissi, not okay for Kathakali, okay uh, for Bharatanatyam, not okay for Kuchipudi? How do you draw I, these lines? I can tell you one thing. It is only the, can it is the same. The entire Natyashasa is based on human psyche. It is, it is nothing else but human psyche. We all go through all these gamuts. All, what we do is, my, I, I had a very dear friend, I mean all of you have heard of him, Kavalam Narayana Panikar. Both of us created this Mohini Atam concept. And uh, one day I asked him, I said, Kavalam, how would you say, you know, he, know that, he knew that I was deep in Kerala system, so we became great friends. And how would we differentiate the whole thing? And I was just wondering, what is it that I'm emoting? I'm getting, getting a piece. I'm not that. I, I do my, my kubja is world famous and uh, uh, the other items. When I do kubja, I know that I'm tearing myself away. When my whole body is sort of so taut and all that, the item is over, I do like this, take a deep breath and go away. So I was talking to Kaval and we would talk for hours together. And I said that, what do you do? He said, can I, can I tell you one thing? Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen you, I've seen you do your, uh, all these items, Kupcha and all these items, and I've seen so many times, tears roll down your eyes. But have you noticed, those tears are not hot tears. Those are simulated tears. Mm -hmm. You are, you have become a, a par excellence uh, a present, I mean, presenter of this system of Natya Shastra. You talk of Natya Shastra, you have converted me to Natya Shastra. Tears are rolling down your eyes. Next moment, I'll do like this and walk away. It's not Kanak. My Guruji said, he used to say one thing, this every dancer must know, tum tum mat bano. That's all my Guru told me. He taught me this, tum tum mat bano. I used to say, what the hell is this mat talking? I sometimes used to go and ask my mother, Mommy, Guruji really talks rubbish. Said, Shut up, don't talk like this. What do you mean by rubbish? And he said, tum tum mat bano. What does he say? Well, my mother couldn't explain to it. But today I, I apologize to him. I, I miss him so much. But I am dancing. I am not Kanak. I am not Yatin's so wife dancing. To take the question back to uh, Abhinaya, when you are talking, two things strike me. One is an institutionalized uh, kind of course. Yes. Where do you get every individual to even approach the kind of yes. Uh, mastery you're talking about, where Satvika Abhinaya also appears to be controlled or controllable. That's what I'm getting from what you're saying. That's one thing. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, when you have to teach the techniques of raising your eyebrows and this and that, then you can't choose individually and say, nahi, aapke upar nahi jach raha, aap mat karo, nahi, aap ki no. So how do you balance but, bringing but then, individualized techniques each, each to child teach it to a who group. comes to me, each child who comes to me, I, I teach Abhinaya. Now, nowadays, for the last one year, I'm not going deep into it because the, my, my students, the, uh, uh, this Vaibhav is there, all these people, Deepak is there, Deepak is teaching a lot. All these people are there, I would have left it to them. But each one I honed. I knew what is Vaibhav, I know what is Deepak, I know what is Sunanda. All these kids, I know what is it. I do adapt my system, but that is only to suit their body structure because I have studied it very deeply. Thank you. But otherwise, I'm no. Looking at the clock and thinking that Please because we have to hear the, the kinetic part of it, Priya wants to say something. Uh, regarding institutional, I just wanted to uh, mention something that I had uh, 
observed in Kalakshetra. Good. We had, uh, you know, we had started a documentation process of the Ardhava systems and also the uh, certain compositions that are, uh, you know, particular to Kalakshetra. Um, mainly because, one, the young, it would benefit the generations who come after to know exactly how to teach, you know, what are the important points that they have to keep in mind about the Kalakshetra style, what has been handed down. And also, uh, we, uh, everybody had a different opinion about this is how it should be done. So we thought, let us codify it, video it, document it for the future, for future reference for everybody. We had all the senior teachers, um, you know, in, at the same time, and we started with the Tattadava and we went like that. It was so interesting to see that most of the Adavas, none of them agreed on. <laughs> so it just reinforces the fact that, it, you know, the student sees what she is capable of. The teacher teaches according to the student and their own ability. So it's so subjective. So that uh, uh, we, of course, we, uh, what we did later was we compromised saying this is possible and this is possible and then everybody agreed that we will keep it like this. But it took a lot of discussion, sometimes heated discussions, to arrive at some uh, mutually acceptable decision. So I think it, it arts, it's the Guru Sishya Parampara. Institution gives you a very holistic learning and a base. But I think beyond that, it's the individual personal training yes, that you I receive. Think, uh, yeah. We got that between the lines of what Kanak Ma'am said also. I am going to pass on to Arvind. And Arvind, our brief for you is to cover uh, the experiences of the diaspora using Singapore as an example, because that's where you live and work. But uh, apart from uh, what is happening in uh, regular training, ongoing training, uh, Kanak Ma'am said to me the other day that uh, she's not sure that individual workshops have any value because they mitigate against continuous training. Whereas when you were talking to me, you said the best way for you to train teachers in Singapore is to have workshops. And that, in fact, uh, Priya has come. And I know Hari Krishna does uh, peripatetic teaching. He's got groups that he works with regularly, but perhaps once a year or once in six months uh, in Canada, because one of their branches of their parampara is thriving there with Latapada. So I want you all to talk about this, but I definitely want us to make, if we do this in about six or seven minutes, wearing my management hat, I would love to come back to the uh, uh, dance routines and training and the rigor for the future with uh, Dr. Rayleigh's uh, kinesiology that uh, she has developed. So um, in our experience, I think, which won't be quite similar to the diaspora. So um, my mentor and our founder of Apsarasa, Nila Mami, she was uh, with Kalakshetra uh, almost 20 years first as a student and uh, she was then uh, appointed as a faculty by uh, Rukmini Devi. And uh, for, for many years she was only given first year students. And in fact, uh, uh, after a while when she got the courage, she went and told Atte, why don't I get, I'm not getting second and third year. And, and then uh, Atte had said, no, you're a very good foundation teacher and the foundation is important so that they can build the repertoire on it. So that was a strength of, uh, of preparing students on foundation. Many of our students today are well-renowned teachers of, uh, in all over India and all over the world from Kalakshetra. But then fate, uh, after that she had to come to Singapore and when she came to Singapore, uh, she was terribly shocked. E even in a few documents she has said she actually wanted to pack her bags and leave uh, because she saw a different world out there. It was not a Kalakshetra, no full-time students there who live and breathe the art. These students come once a week, twice a week and they have a whole other life that's running parallelly in the world. And, uh, she realized that it, she couldn't use the Kalakshetra model and try to create another Kalakshetra in Singapore because it's not, it's not how life is there. So that urged her to then uh, start to work on a, 
uh, I would call the first time a syllabus. So she brought a kind of a syllabus to Singapore students, probably the earliest one. And uh, she divided that into, uh, you know, cup eight years uh, course, depending on how often the students are coming. And then it had, of course, we call it beginners, intermediate, and advanced. And then it has a repertoire. So eight years is given for a part-time student to learn a repertoire with maybe two varnams in it and a couple of padams in it. And, and Adavus take the first three years because uh, that's her pedigree. So she was very particular that the Adavus systems come into place. Uh, then, of course, uh, later years as we moved on, she had to modify the syllabus because now her students went to start to teach and they opened their own institutions. And so she had to empower them to then take that, that uh, pedagogy further. But then in the last uh, 10 years, uh, we have another impetus that come into the scene because our students who learn Bharatanatyam in the diaspora world also learn other academic subjects. And they started to compare. If I go to a law, uh, study law, or go to a computer class, there is a system, there is a, there's, I know where my target is, what my end goal is, what will I achieve in, in the next four sessions. So they started to ask questions. Now, I'm learning other words. You can't, don't tell me you'll keep learning three years of other words. What am I trying to go for? What is the, what is the, my, my path? And what will I achieve? So then we realized that uh, academically sound uh, syllabus is more important as well to serve the diaspora community. So which made us then to recruit, um, you know, even teachers to come who have done their bachelor's, master's, uh, and, and, and PhDs in dance as well, not just learn from, uh, you know, Kalakshetra diploma, but also academically have uh, the other subjects. So today we have, uh, uh, like Mohana Priyan, who's with us, who has done the uh, MPhil and is now studying, um, uh, you know, his PhD. The other teachers we have are also done their master's degree. It's important because now we are communicating to uh, a different type of diaspora students who, who are comparing a Bharatanatyam course with the other courses that they, they would do, and they will do multiple courses. Then the other thing that we realized in Singapore was what uh, the diaspora uh, uh, has a challenge. In, in Chennai, you, it is a community of artists who are actually growing the art form. Though you have your own parampara or anything, but you see each other, you watch each other, your musicians are common, they are going around, your resource people are common. Uh, there is many things that are indirectly, and uh, unknowingly, we can see that the whole system is growing. But there, we are isolated from, uh, from uh, you know, having such rich resources, rich, uh, you know, and to watch other uh, gurus uh, pre uh, creating work. So the teachers started to, their knowledge started to diminish because they only know the margam they learned from their own guru and what they added later. So we started to have, uh, you know, uh, as part of Dance India Asia Pacific, a course for teachers. And uh, of course, when I proposed this, I was told that you no know, two teachers will sit in the same room. And why would a teacher come to learn from another teacher when she is a guru? But I said, no, no, I think I can convince them. So I used that uh, uh, because I also have a, a background on corporate world. So I told every doctor, if he doesn't do his CMA, his license is evoked. So you have to go and do a certain number of hours or days every year to upgrade your skill. I said, same for Bharatanatyam Guru. You need to find way to upgrade your skill set, especially if you're a diasporic teacher, because you don't have the, 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 you know, the Indian uh, you know, uh, black platform. So successfully, we managed to recruit uh, teachers to come. And that can be only done workshops, because they all have their busy, they have their own arangetram. So once a year, we're able to bring them down to 10 days, full day course, and various, various topics are taught. For example, uh, and this is done with discussion. So one year in advance, we call all the participants who come regularly, and we have a discussion. What do you think that you need to, uh, you want to expand yourself? So it's a, it's a ground up initiative now. And for example, one uh, year the teacher said, you know, we are challenged to do group choreography. And we have to create, we, we can't put one, tila, uh, one uh, girl to do a tilana. Nine girls have to do a tilana. So we can't replicate the solo times nine. So then I call, we had Banamati from Bangalore who's known for her group work. She, sh she taught them like 25 different entries for the same Tilana uh, and, and, also, uh, and uh, different things. So each year, so we had Professor C.V. Uh, Chandrasekhar uh, one year to teach them how do you detect, how do you teach Angas with them? Because is, this is uh, as a word being used long. And how for each body type you can correct it. And he also taught them when can you judge a student is ready to be taken to a serious level. So these are things that the teacher, so some examples. So this is how we have developed it. Can we pass? Could I ask if there are any questions, please to bring those now. 
because in this last sort of round, they could probably take the answers. Uh, Hari, any comments on workshop techniques? Well, uh, the comments would be that uh, students <coughs> are from our uh, common uh, institution, like it's a sister institution run by our own uh, student over there. So the instruction is maintaining continuity. So the workshop was relevant method for us to give advanced uh, content and curriculum based on their progress. And thus they could have me come every year in the same academy on different topics. So <coughs> I could not teach the other uh, students from different styles. I prefer to teach from our own uh, Bani. So that was uh, an advantage. Thank you. So um, I think uh, to go back to Dr. Kanakrele, this, uh, when you have students from different styles and you prepare them all in terms of the understanding of uh, the body, then there are sometimes the, a common platform that you can bring them on to. Priya, I'm not sure if Kalakshitra has that kind of a general movement training apart from Adavus. Sorry, I was saying that Dr. Rayleigh has uh, developed ki uh, kinesiology for across the board for the university students. Uh, so when people come in from dis different disciplines at a sort of when they're in their mid to late teens, then you can bring them onto a common platform if they have these kinds of lessons because they're more tuned. So I was uh, going to ask you if Kalakshetra has that. And I was going to ask you, Arvind, whether since uh, Hare Krishna comes from a single style perspective, uh, whether this would apply to you also, but sh maybe we let Dr. Kanakreli do, talk to us about your whole area. I am apologetic. I realize that we're asking you to do it in a short space of time, whereas we could perhaps spend a whole morning learning things from you. But I'm sure, Dr. Rayleigh, this is not your first visit to us So, in this uh, aspect. So please give us a summary of uh, what you've developed, please. Well, <clears throat> just to summarize whatever, whatever I've been hearing. Well, I think I'm older than all, all these people and I've heard it ad hoc all my life. And uh, I've learned, I've absorbed, I've digested. I can only tell you one thing. You are talking. You are looking at a person, an old woman now. I've crossed, crossed certain age, and that is that that person loves what is Indian dance. Not going to. I I hate this categorization of areas. Indian dance is one. All of us take take our inspiration from one fountainhead, and we adapt it as we require it. But at the same time, where I live. The, the language in which I, I was grown up, but I was thrown into the Kerala uh, tradition and I've imbibed it very deeply, much better than most of the Keralites do. What I feel is that we now have to step out. This stepping out I have done and uh, many of my students, as you told me, they're spread all over the world. You see, what is happening is that they are now sticking out to the traditions I always tell them that there will be so many other streams around you. If you are living in X country, which is not India, you will have so many other uh, inputs. Keep your own own traditions intact, but do keep your eyes open to the other things. But you need not bring them into your dance so at all. Body conditioning uh, plans that you had. For it is very essential. It is very Can essential. You tell us what was what you developed? Uh, well, I have I have divided. This is this is done on actually on medical lines and all that, so many doctors had also helped me. They have divided the whole body into certain areas, five uh, levels. So this is the head, this is the chest, torso, uh, this portion and your legs. And where does you don't eat, none of the members move by themselves. It is one entire movement. But where are you going to concentrate? And that is where, they, if, if there is one particular, uh, in Bharatanatyam you say Adavu, in one particular system, in one particular Adavu, you see this is it, this is it. And then you say, where, where does it concentrate upon? And you realize it is on the chest portion or it is on the hip portion. Now, I have evolved a system of sketching these. It, it's in Mohini Atam, but our Bharatanatyam students do it brilliantly. And items are uh, sketched like this. Somebody asked me, how does it help? And 
Five of them got up and started yelling and said, we will, next year we will leave this institution, but this is going to live with us for life. We, we know how to move our bodies, ma'am has done that. And all those sketches, you see when you do that, if I, if I do this in Mohini Atam, you will say that this is your movement. But in that cadence, I show that movement. Now, this is the way I have developed the whole system because we have to teach them scientific. So, it is an area of movement notation, movement notation. as well as an understanding and internalization of Internal. how you arrive at the notation. Yes, yes you have to and, do And uh, I'm hoping your next book will elucidate all <laughs> oh <my> this. <laughs> and I'm going to move on to Priya with uh, the next question. Uh, whether the in, in, in Kalakshetra, right? That's what you asked me. Oh, this question. Okay. okay. This is by David. Yeah. Clearly, there seems to be as many pedagogical methodologies as there are gurus. So, how do we judge the best practices objectively? Look, how else do you judge? By the student, what the student, uh, you know, the quality of the student, the quality of the teacher, that's the only way we can judge, isn't it? So there is one more question, and uh, this will help us summarize uh, something that we haven't talked about um, overtly. It has been a covert comment with, uh, so don't we need a continuous assessment for performers as well? So when Hare Krishna spoke, he said that perhaps a fellow guru would come in and say, ah, this person is doing this item well. So that was validation at the stage where there were no formal structures for assessment and approval. But assessment always happens and uh, this is why some pupils would get taught a particular varnam or not. Because the guru may not say that you're not fit for this, they might find some other excuse to tell you that oh, I'll uh, come back to it later. But uh, very often that would be a result of an internal assessment. And uh, if items are modified, where the choreography is either simplified or in some cases where the I know that Lakshman sir used to do this because Mavin Koo has told me this. So he would take these jatis out and say, when you are performing, I want you to do these jatis with these cross patterns. So uh, that assessment again goes on and is perhaps uh, not apparent. Now I'm sure with uh, Kalakshetra and uh, with uh, Nalanda, places like that, um, you probably have uh, exams all the time and you have people being warned, perhaps the previous year, saying that if you don't make up your marks in this aspect of the course, it's going to be hard for you to clear the whole course. So that assessment is evident and formal. Do you have assessment processes for workshops that you do in terms of what the participants got out of it and uh, whether it, what you wanted the teachers to achieve was something that they did? Do you have a course plan or a lesson plan ahead of the course and then a ticking of the boxes as to whether... So assessment happens all the time. And uh, Kami is looking at me. This is, we are ready to wrap up. Um, it's, it's been a lovely, lovely panel, and I only wish we'd had a lot of time. But I think what we got in uh, quality and exclusivity in the sharing of experience is something that everybody here will cherish. And thank you all for being here. Thank you, my panel. Thank you, Music Academy.